it's like Nabil loves football, but he couldn't go out and watch a football match on a night because he's not allowed to. Nabil is 30. This is his girlfriend Claire and their baby Sydney. They live with Claire's parents in Middlesbrough. Nabil's originally from Sudan and says he left when he was three. Eleven years ago, he went to prison for a year for street robbery and ended up eligible for deportation as a foreign national. On four occasions, though, Sudan have refused to accept him back, so he's been stuck in limbo in the immigration system ever since. What's his name? Yeah, Charlie. Charlie. Nabil's been put in detention centres multiple times and released multiple times. He's now on detention bail, and he has a strict curfew. Nabil has been ordered to stay inside this house between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. every day. That's the box. How does it work? If I'm out after 8 o'clock, a minute after 8, it will ring me straight away. And they'll ask me questions. Where have you been? Who's I'm on the end of the phone? Been. Yeah, it's uh, G4S. G4S, security G4S company. Security, yeah. okay. And that detects where your tag yeah, on your tag ankle is. <laughs> It feels like I have one as well. I'm in my own country and yeah. I have I have it on my leg as well because we don't do anything. We've got to make sure we're literally in the house for between half seven and quarter eight to make sure that he doesn't break his curfew. Four months ago, my nana passed away. I couldn't go because I'm on tack. <clears throat> it's my nana. She said she, like, she's been looking after me since I was. Young, you know, um, this is you know. how bad the tagging is. We we don't smoke in the house for obviously reasons. The baby. If Nabil wants to go out in the back or the front Bagani. for a cigarette, they've got to take it through court. If I step out there, it means breach. Nabil's had his curfew for three years now. Many others released on immigration bail have the same. See, it affects your skin. The big problem with these curfews is that the appeal court recently ruled that the Home Office never had the right to impose them. In court, the Home Office argued that since it had the legal power to restrict residents, a curfew could be part of that. The appeal court disagreed, saying it was absurd to say that if someone isn't at home between certain hours, they don't live there. It concluded that no sufficient authority to impose the curfew has been evidenced. If you look at the very intricate, very detailed, very comprehensive immigration release system, within the various immigration acts. There is no basis at all for a curfew. And the Home Office has admitted that they shouldn't have been doing this, that it was unlawful to do this? The Home Office has belatedly now accepted at the end of August that all curfews are unlawful, yet we still know of individuals that are subject to these curfews. Why is this important? Why should we care? The law places a premium on the liberty of an individual that applies equally to you, me or anyone on the street, whether they're British, foreign or otherwise. For that reason, the law requires that the person detaining to justify their detention of an individual. In this instance, the Home Office have been acting completely outside of the legal regime. Do you see that by committing a crime you brought this all on? You do something bad, obviously, you know, you, you deserve punish for it. And I did get punished for it, being sent to prison and everything. I don't know what's this part coming from, you see what I'm trying to say. Nabil served his prison sentence 10 years ago. The curfew's not part of prison release conditions. It's part of his immigration bail. He doesn't know if or when it will be removed. And now, he'll be taking legal action to find out if it was unlawful the entire time. I feel like you've been like, over-punished. It is over-punished, yeah. Just for, for what you've done. Yeah, you know. You've, yeah, you've broke the law, yeah. but... It's like I they're see, taking the rest people. of your life. Putting, putting the curfew on him. Just destroys him, really. 
can't do nothing, can't go nowhere really. It's like they've just put his life on hold and not really cared. It, it, it is annoying, you can say so much. You could scream and you could shout and you could say so much, but no one's going to listen. No one actually listens to you. Realistically, lots of people won't have sympathy for these individuals because a lot of them have done prison time. This is not about the individuals. This is not about the sympathy you may have for them. This is about ensuring that those acting with the power and the might of the state act within the law that her parliament has set. Edwin Sandy is also on detention bail and was previously ordered to live under a curfew. I spoke to him first three years ago when he was in an immigration detention centre. So this was your curfew? Uh, yeah. Mm. Eight to eight? Yeah. Edwin's also done prison time for multiple offences and ended up eligible for deportation to Sierra Leone. He was born there and left at 13. He was put on a plane, but like Nabil, the country wouldn't accept him back. He's now stuck in the system too. He's been in and out of detention for six years. Are you angry? No, I'm not really angry. I'm just surprised why with the um, home office that is the government deemed to trick people like that. Not I'm being angry, I'm just, just questioning whether, you know, these illegal stuff that they're doing, what else could be that could they be doing that is not right. Not everyone who's been subject to these curfews has been to prison, like Edwin and Nabil. Some have overstayed their visa, some are seeking asylum. The rule of law applies equally to everyone in this country. Just because you're a state actor doesn't mean you can take the law for granted. The fact that the Home Office provided this refreshingly frank witness statement saying that they assumed there was lawful authority for these curfews until this challenge was brought really underlines how the Home Office have treated these individuals. The law firm that brought this case against the Home Office estimates that hundreds, if not thousands of people, have been unlawfully curfewed and may be able to apply for compensation. Nabil's already been awarded £65,000 years ago for unlawful detention. Now he may be eligible for more taxpayers' money. We don't care about compensation. We just want him to have the freedom, want the tag took off his leg, want the curfew stopped. Just be a normal, be a yeah. normal person. Normal know. family, do what families do. Be a good person, that's what I want. If I get a chance. At the moment, Nabil's not allowed to work, not allowed to study and not entitled to benefits. He lives off Clare. So I've got to do, just sit there, beg for that two pound or something. You don't beg, don't make me sound that nasty. I, to me, it's worse than that, babe, to be honest with you. It's too much, like, you can't even explain it, to be honest. It's just deep. The way I look at it, it's, it's like I'm dead. I can't do nothing. I'm just there sitting, not bringing in, I'm not taking out. All I'm hoping for is, is one day all this, Things, you just disappear, like you just put full stop to it. At the moment, Nabil's not allowed to work. The Shadow Home Secretary, Diane Abbott, took a look at our report. It's quite extraordinary that the curfews are in some cases more severe than if you'd actually committed a crime and it shows that once you get lost in the immigration system this is as if people think that the normal rules of natural justice don't apply to you. Are you surprised that the Home Office has been using these curfews unlawfully? No because almost from the beginning the state has abused the notion of immigration detention. I was in Parliament when we first introduced detention centres and MPs were told that nobody would be kept in these detention centres for more than a couple of months. What we now find is people, including children, being kept in detention centres for as much as a year in and out of detention centres and now this. What do you think the Home Office need to do now? The Home Office needs to review each and every one of these cases where people are under 
immigration detention curfew. The most important thing is to stand up for the rule of law and it must be wrong if the Home Office is imposing curfews which are illegal. The Home Office says it is now reviewing all cases in which a curfew is in place. Nabil's yet to hear from them though. In future, they say they'll be simplifying bail powers in the Immigration Act 2016, so it's clear who has the power to impose curfews. Do you think the Home Office may not even know who is on the curfew? I think that might be right. I think that's probably right.